We all knew this day was coming, but if you're like me, you were probably just too stubborn to admit it. In what was probably the worst kept secret in aviation, Boeing officially announced this week during its second quarter conference call with investors and the press that it will finally end production of the Queen of the Skies in 2022. That's next on Maximus. Greetings everybody, Maximus here. Thanks for tuning in again. I hope you are all well wherever you are all around the world. Really quick before we start, please be sure to hang around until the end because I have a question that I know you, my incredible subscribers, can help me with. But first, our story. Boeing finally announced the news that no aviation lover ever wanted to hear. And that, of course, was the news that 2022 will mark the end of production for the Queen herself, the Boeing 747. Even before the disastrous year of 2020 and the aviation apocalypse, the handwriting was on the wall for the 747. However, it wasn't due to technical or safety issues. The Boeing 747 has one of the best safety and performance records in the history of aviation. No, this decision simply came down to the fact that it's cheaper to operate and purchase new, more fuel-efficient modern twin-engine jumbos than the older gas guzzlers with twice as many engines, thus making the four-engine heavyweights such as the 747 and the Airbus A380 as well, expendable. 2020 has already seen Qantas, British Airways, and Virgin Airlines, among others, officially retire their fleets of 747s, in some cases years ahead of schedule. Before the pandemic hit earlier this year, airlines all over the world had begun to announce plans to send the Queen of the Skies off into the sunset. However, much like at the end of a great concert, they were hoping for an encore that would last well into 2022 at least, before the 747 would take her final bow. However, as we know, that all changed in 2020. In the early days and weeks of the global aviation apocalypse, many airlines still held out hope that things would snap back sooner rather than later. However, the first sign that the super jumbo jet era was coming to an end came not from Boeing, but Airbus, when airlines across the globe began retiring their relatively young, cavernous A380 aircraft in large numbers. Sadly, however, as the pandemic began to linger, airlines were hemorrhaging cash and in order to survive, they were going to have to rely on the smaller, more efficient modern wide-body aircraft, such as the 787 Dreamliner, Airbus's A350, and even Boeing's 777. However, some airlines did manage to give their customers one last chance to say goodbye. While Qantas sent most of their 747 fleet out to California to be scrapped, they kept one behind for a proper farewell with a series of one-hour flights to Brisbane and Canberra that took place between July 15th and 27th. The tickets sold for $747 for business class and $400 for economy. However, it's not all doom and gloom. There are still going to be a few carriers who will hang on to their 747s for the foreseeable future at least, with most of them being located in Asia with the exception of Lufthansa. Lufthansa has both the 400 and Dash 8 versions of the 747, and pandemic or not, they still plan on keeping them. Air China also flies both the 400 and Dash 8 versions, and they too have no intention of giving up the Queen anytime soon. Korean Air has 12 747s flying, however their future may be in doubt, but the airline says for now, the 747 will continue to fly. Air India says that all four of its 747s will remain in the air, as well as Thai Airways and their 11 747s they too will keep flying. Spain's Wamos Air and Russia's Rossiya Airline will continue to use all of their 747s as well. The main reason production of the 747 has been around this long and is able to hang on until the year 2022 is due to her strength in the freight and cargo segment which ironically was the initial reason the 747 was created in the first place. In 1965, Boeing lost out to Lockheed in competition to build a jumbo military transport for the U.S. Air Force. Lockheed's winning design was no slouch, though. Far from it, as the Galaxy C-5 went on to become a legend in her own right. However, while Boeing was considering scrapping their new cargo venture entirely, suddenly along came Juan. It was Pan Am's founder, Juan Tripp, who had the ingenious idea to convert Boeing's loss into Pan Am's gain. 
And just like that, the 747 was born, and the rest is history. So I guess it's fitting that the 747 should end where it began. Boeing is down to 15 orders for the 747-8 cargo variant, 12 for UPS and 3 for Russian carrier Volga. And once those 15 are complete, they will be added to the hundreds of 747 cargo jets already in service all around the globe, and most likely will remain in service for decades to come. And of course, there are those two 747-8s that are being modified to replace the current 747-200B series aircraft used for the United States Air Force One program, which of course uses the twin 747s exclusively as the official aircraft for the American president. And now for that question I wanted to ask. When I started this channel back in 2019, the aviation world was booming. Who could have ever imagined what would happen in 2020? So where I once had an endless stream of aviation content and ideas just a few months ago, now at least for the foreseeable future, content ideas are harder to come by. That's where you, my incredible subscribers, come in. I put a lot of time and effort into each video, and I want to make sure that I'm always covering topics that you enjoy and will click on. So instead of just guessing from time to time, I figured I would simply go right to the source and ask you, what aviation stories or segments of aviation are you interested in? What kind of stories would you like to see covered? Let me know in the comments section down below. I can't promise I'll get to every suggestion, but I know this audience and many of you have and still do actually work and live in the aviation industry, and you have great insight, and I always value your input. So let me know, and in the meantime, I'll keep working hard at bringing you the best content I can. And of course, if you haven't yet, don't forget to subscribe, like, share, and ring the bell. And as always, remember, Leave the rubber on the runway and your troubles on the ground. And I will see you next time in the air. Yeah, this Maximus.